In chapter three, we will be discussing the various voices and music instruments and instrument families that are used uh, in music, mostly contemporary music. This chapter is important because it allows you to hear the variety of instruments that we will be talking about so that you have an idea of what you are listening to when you listen to a piece of music. When you analyze a piece of music, we will ask you things like, which instruments did you hear? And this lecture helps you get a better idea of what it is that you are actually listening to. First, we start with voice types, which, uh, like the instruments, are arranged uh, in high, middle, and low ranges. Uh, these ranges apply to the various instrument types as well. So it's very easy to think of your voices and your instruments in these various categories, especially just high and low. If you are a part of a choir, you have definitely seen these terms before. For our female voices, the high female voice is called soprano, with the low female voice being called alto. In the middle of that range is what we call mezzo-soprano, which uh, kind of straddles the two. For our male voices, the high range is tenor, while the low is bass, and baritone is the name that we apply to that middle range. Now when we talk about instrument types or instrument families, uh, there are six main families that we will be discussing. Woodwinds, percussion, keyboards, strings, brass, and electronic instruments. So first we will go into stringed instruments, which are instruments that, are, that create their sound or their vibration uh, through the use of strings, which are plucked or bowed or strummed. Uh, we have examples of what strings were made of um, from the very beginning all the way up until now, where they are mostly metal. And here we have um, examples of our orchestral stringed instruments. Of course, instruments that are not on this slide include things like the guitar and the harp and the banjo, ukulele, various other stringed instruments. But for this particular chapter, we're looking primarily at orchestral instruments. And just like the voices that we saw a couple of slides ago, this is arranged in low, or sorry, high to low order. So our highest voice would be the violin, like, uh, like a soprano in choir. It sounds like this. The viola is our alto voice, second highest in range. The tenor range, or second lowest range, is played by the cellos. And the lowest instrument in this string family is the double bass. Moving on to woodwind instruments, uh, these are one of the two instrument families that requires air for its sound, but the vibration actually occurs for most woodwinds on the reed, a small piece of wood that creates a very iconic sound.
Now, one of the highest of these woodwind instruments is the flute, but even higher than that is the piccolo, which is a much smaller flute instrument. And these are one of the, uh, or some of the few instruments that do not require a reed to make it sound. Rather, the the sound comes from blowing across the uh, the tone hole. And here's your example of a piccolo sound. Now moving down in ranges, we have the clarinet and the saxophone. These are single reed woodwinds. That means there's one piece of wood against a mouthpiece to create its sound. Here's your example of a clarinet sound. And the saxophone, which is often mistaken for a brass instrument because of the material it's made out of, but again, it is a woodwind due to the reed and the mouthpiece. Sorry if that was a little loud. Now, double reed woodwind instruments do not have a mouthpiece, but instead use two pieces of wood, two reeds, bound together to create their sound. An oboe is still a uh, higher instrument, the same, a similar range to the clarinet and the flute. And the bassoon is one of the lowest instruments in the woodwind family. Brass instruments, the next family that we will be discussing, they create their sound by vibrating their lips inside a conical mouthpiece. And then that sound is amplified through the horn to get a brass sound. And these four instruments are arranged pretty much in, uh, again, in range order from trumpet, the highest, down to tuba, the lowest. Here are your sound examples. That was a trumpet. French horn having a bit lower range than a trumpet, but can also reach pretty high pitches as well. The trombone and the tuba will be in the both in this next example. You will hear the trombones first, that brass instrument in the tenor range, and then the example will end with the tuba in the bass range. Percussion instruments, uh, this family is a wide variety of instruments that are played by being struck, shaken, or scraped, or uh, somehow making physical contact with the instrument to make it sound. Those instruments are divided up into two 
different categories. Our definite pinch pitch instruments have actual uh, actual pitches, act- actual tones and notes that can be played on the instrument, like a xylophone. The second category of percussion instruments do not have a pitch, and they're called indefinite pitch instruments, and rather they don't have specific notes, they're only used to play rhythm. Keyboard instruments are a uh, an instrument family all on their own, a, a different category that um, we don't always talk about and we don't really think about th- things like the piano being in its own instrument family, but there are unique properties to keyboard instruments that make them their own instrument, not a percussion instrument or a string instrument as some people tend to think pianos are. Uh, for example, they're played with both hands. They can be used as a solo and accompaniment instrument, meaning you can play it by yourself and provide your own chords to your own music by playing the melody and the harmony at the same time. Three instruments that are a part of this family include the harpsichord, organ, and piano. These uh, instruments, especially the harpsichord, uh, you may not know very well, uh, the harpsichord being a predecessor of the piano, um, the organ, which um, of course makes it sound by blowing air through pipes that are activated from the keys. They all have different ways of making their sound, but it is the way they are played that makes them similar and makes them keyboard instruments. Uh, Moving into electronic instruments, I must say I don't exactly agree with this slide. Um, It includes pictures of a keyboard and a guitar, which um, I would not consider examples of electronic instruments. Uh, Rather, they are just electronic versions of a keyboard instrument and a stringed instrument. Um, Electronic instruments can more be defined as the sounds that are made from a computer, maybe a garage band program. Um, a sound pad, all sorts of sound effects that are created electronically without the use of an instrument. And we have several genres of music today that use electronic sounds exclusively without the use of instruments. And um, I'm sure you know of several examples, examples like EDM, dubstep, um, techno, all sorts of electronic genres of music that use... uh, computers rather than conventional instruments. Now talking about instruments of non-Western culture um, is basically talking about instruments from other areas of the world. Our course focuses on Western culture, which is uh, European and American culture, um, just due to the fact that uh, other areas of the world have completely different traditions and cultures within their music and their history. So we won't go too much into non-Western culture in this class, but in this chapter we do talk about how we identify musical instruments from other parts of the world. And so we call stringed instruments chordophones, wind instruments aerophones, instruments that are hit, struck, or shaken, idiophones, and drums with a head across the top, membranophones. Now the instruments that we talked about can be put together in several different kinds of ensembles, different combinations of uh, various instruments, but uh, the biggest one, of course, with the four main instrument families we talked about is the orchestra. The orchestra consists of the string family, (laughs) 
which is made up of violins, violas, cellos, and basses. Again, the strings that we mentioned a few slides ago. Um, so when we say the string family in, in, res, um, in regards to the orchestra, we are not talking about guitars or, uh, or harps or banjos. Again, we were just talking about those four main orchestral string instruments. Woodwinds is our second family. Brass family. And the percussion family. Now, when those instruments come together, it creates a very thick texture, a very thick homophonic texture of all these different voices and, uh, and instruments. You'll see in this particular diagram, there are a few instruments that are added, such as the piano or harp, um, as well as a few other percussion instruments that we did not see and some woodwind instruments that we did not see. Um, and that is because the orchestra has developed quite a bit from the 17th century when it was first conceived. But when these instruments come together, they create a sound similar to this. This is what an orchestra would look like on the stage. So that is the end of chapter three. Again, please make sure you read the additional information in your book before you take the test, as it does have a, a few more key pieces of information.